Welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of Mass and watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to get all of our YouTube messages. This is the fifth and final week of our message series called Cornerstone. We have been looking at the foundational principles of our parish. Our faith ultimately comes down to the person of Jesus Christ. Our mission is about connecting the world to the person of Jesus Christ. Our faith is not founded on human beings, but on Jesus who was rejected at the crucifixion and rose from the dead to become the cornerstone. And as his church, we get to bring people into a growing relationship with him. Knowing Jesus is the single most important thing that can ever happen to anyone, our mission is to worship God, serve others, and make disciples. We will start our new series next week called Staying Power. You will find messages in a bulletin and a daily reflection that will be sent to your email address. If you have not shared your email with our office, please do so. Just a reminder that you can always catch past messages for this series on our YouTube channel, Most Holy Trinity Parish, Susquehanna County. If you are away from your faith, thank you for watching. As a church, we are trying to stay connected to you. Know that we miss you and are praying for you. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's messages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the, the highest, highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads to give, uh, dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, 
Give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its shoots as far as the river. The The vineyard vineyard of the the Lord Lord is the house house of of Israel. Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste and the beast of the field feed upon it. The vineyard vineyard of of the the Lord Lord is the house house of Israel. Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom yourself made strong. The The vineyard vineyard of the the Lord Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The The vineyard vineyard of the Lord Lord is the house house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, 
threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Hello, everyone, again. So good to be here with you to share in the Eucharist and certainly uh, the Word of God to break it open, help us to understand what the Lord's message is for us today. We've been going <clears throat> for a few weeks now through the Cornerstone, and today that we're going to have the, the last portion of that, but we're hearing about uh, what we maybe it says but nicely, very clearly in this psalm, that the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. So the vineyard is the house, and the people of Israel uh, is the vine. And of course, the purpose of the vine is to bear fruit. If the vine doesn't bear fruit, it has no value. If we go to the book of the prophet Ezekiel, God says to Ezekiel, son of man, uh, what good is the wood of a vine compared to the other wood of the forest? You can't use it to make anything. No one even makes a peg to hang a cup on, and you can't even use it for firewood if you try to burn it. It only gets charred. And so the only purpose for divine, again, is to bear fruit. And so that's what the Lord is always going to be looking for when he sees divine, which is his people. Are they being faithful to the covenant, and are they bearing fruit? The great fruit that God wants for his people, especially of the Old Testament, would be to make him known to all the nations, so that all the nations come to know him as the one and true God and to come to worship him. So all the nations will be together worshiping uh, the one God. And so we can see in the first reading, there are some problems with that. It's probably at the time of the harvest of the grapes, the vineyards, because uh, the prophet Isaiah is using that image, but he comes seemingly in the middle of his celebration because he wants to join in and he says, I'd like to sing a song. I want to sing a song about my friend and his vineyard. And that would get their attention because if his friend owns a vineyard, that friend is a very wealthy person. You're very successful to own a vineyard would be a very big deal in those days, uh, you know, because of the fruit that it bears, but all, you know, the great profit that would come from having something uh, like that. But anyway, he starts off, and his song starts off very nicely. The people are waiting to hear probably a very joyful and uh, kind of happy song about how wonderful this harvest is going to be, because he said, my friend had a vineyard is on a very fertile hill. So there's a very good start. And the ground was spaded and cleared of the stones, and they put a hedge around it and they hewed out the wine press and built a tower, meaning that that person, the owner, is going to be keeping an eye on the vineyard to, to, to take care of it and to protect it. And then he planted the choicest vines, so everything is in order. And he waits for the time of the produce, but what happens? The vine produces wild grapes or sour grapes. So these are grapes, the produce that you can't eat, you're not going to be able to make wine out of it, you're not going to be able to sell it, so the value of the vineyard comes to nothing. And all of a sudden, things kind of turn a little dark for the people hearing this song, because now they realize it's not just Isaiah talking about his friend, his friend is God in heaven, and God begins to speak his word through the prophet. Now you guys, uh, citizens and people of Ju uh, Jerusalem and Judea, uh, of people of Israel, what did I fail to do for my vineyard? And of course, the answer is nothing. You've done everything you could for the vineyard, and now it has yielded the wild grapes. And so uh, the judgment is that God is going to tear down the hedge, and he's going to hand it over to the wild beasts, you know, into the weeds and the different things that would grow up. And that is going to happen literally in the exile into Babylon. People haven't kept the covenant, and so the vine is going to be uprooted, 
and it's going to be taken away, and it's going to remain in Babylon until the people turn back again to God and learn to be faithful to produce the fruit that the Lord is looking for. And so we can see uh, how important it is for us to really do and be uh, the Christian, the servant the Lord is calling us to be. But we go to the gospel, and Jesus is using that chapter 5 of the book of the prophet Isaiah to continue his discussion with the chief priests and the elders. We talked about that last week. Uh, Jesus isn't too happy with them because they didn't believe the words of John the Baptist when John pointed out, there is Jesus, he is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. And so they didn't believe, not even when they saw the good fruit of the conversions of people like the tax collectors and the prostitutes who came to live a new life following the gospel of the Lord. And so now he's going to say to them, again, there is about this vineyard and about uh, the vine and all that was done for it. And yet now there are these uh, tenants there taking care of the vineyard who are not doing what they ought to do. They're not giving the produce to the landowner at the proper time. So that would be something that would be kind of common in the days of, of Jesus at that area, that someone would have many, many acres of vines, and he would lease it out to tenants, and they would live there, and of course, uh, they would work the land, and their uh, livelihood would be the produce that they grow. So they would have a living being provided by the landowner, and then uh, the landowner's part would be to receive his share of the produce, and that would be kind of the deal. But Jesus is saying these tenants aren't doing that. The, the uh, landowner sent one servant and they beat him, another one they killed, another one they stoned. And of course, Jesus is adding into that chapter 5 of the book of the prophet Isaiah, the prophets, you know, who were killed by the people in the past, earlier than the days of Jesus. And of course, the people listening to this, the elders and the uh, chief priests, they know that this is being focused on them, that they are the ones who are the tenant farmers and are being accused of not giving the proper service and, and produce in return to God for what he has done uh, for them. And so, you know, he asked them that question before the full realization of what he's saying comes to them. What do you think God is going to do? You know, considering too, not only has he sent his servants, but now he says, I'm going to send my son. They'll respect my son. And, of course, they say, we're going to take the son out, we're going to kill him, and we will have the inheritance. So if you were a tenant farmer in those days, and you were living on someone's property, taking care of the property, and that person died without having any sons, you would become the owner of the property. And so there's something very nefarious going on there. They're going to kill the Son of God and continue to take control of everything that's going on there in the Holy Land. And God says, I see what you're doing in Jesus is actually prophesying about his own death on the cross. But in his moment of mercy, he's saying to these uh, people, the chief priests and the elders, if you do this, if you follow through with your thoughts and you put me to death, that means you're breaking your covenant with God the Father, and here's what's going to be the result. And here he goes to clearer language, no longer talking about the vineyard, but he says very clearly the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to someone else who will bear the fruit and give it to the, uh, the, to the master, to God at the proper time. And so for us, you know, we are also uh, the vine. Of course, we have to remember the words of Jesus, too, when in the New Testament he said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. So he is that true vine of Israel. Rather than completely wiping out the vineyard, God says, I'm going to plant the choicest of all the vines, and that's going to be my son, who even though he dies, he's going to rise again. And he is going to, as he said himself, be the cornerstone of something new. So that stone rejected by the builders is going to become the cornerstone. That's the Lord. Anyone united to him, they're going to have life. If you're like a branch separated from that vine, there'll be no life in that person. And so Jesus, that cornerstone, Peter the rock is the next stone. And Jesus said, on that rock, I'm going to build my church. And all of us are called to be living stones in that new living temple of the church, the kingdom of God. And we too then need to bear fruit. And so how do we do that? Well, pretty much what we've been talking about, I, we, we go back a couple of weeks and we say, first, we need it to love God. We know that means keeping his commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, says the Lord. 
Along with that, we need to love our neighbors. So we could start with the silver rule from the book of Tobit. It says, don't do to anyone else what you wouldn't want done to you. We could add to that the golden rule in chapter 7 of Matthew, the gospel we've been going through, when the Lord said, do to others what you would have them do to you. This fulfills the law and the prophets. Again, with the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, all those things we know that we would like others to do for us, we want to do for them. And finally, to do the greatest thing we could do for another person is to help them become a disciple of the Lord. That is the one thing we need more than anything else to be part, you know, be a branch grafted into that vine that gives life. Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. And along with that, we need to know, again, that we have received grace from God, grace in the form of mercy and forgiveness, and we want to be sharing that with each other in that living community of the church. You know, we know that uh, the church works best where grace is most evident. If people come to the church and they experience what people experienced in the presence of the Lord, something of the joy of being with God, the peace of being with God, uh, that new meaning to life, simply being one with him. If they find that as a share in the community, they're going to want to be part of that community and to stay. They will become people who really come to know the Lord. And so to help us to do this, I would just suggest one little prayer that we can say several times during the day. You know, Lord Jesus, help me to know you better. Lord Jesus, help me to know you better. If we know him better, that means we're going to be better disciples ourselves, serving him as he served us. And if we're able to do that as his servants, we're also going to be better at making disciples. So together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer the Lord our prayers and petitions. For the church, that we may be a fruitful garden, producing a harvest rich of justice, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered rejection, that God will heal their wounds, fill them with hope, and guide them into the acceptance of a community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper relationship with God, that we may not be satisfied with simply using religious words and gestures, but rather make the gospel the source of all our words and deeds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of human life, that we may recognize God's gift of life in everyone and strive to honor and support that life in each person that we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, as we are aware of being good stewards, we will reflect upon what it means 
to be the hands of Christ as we begin our stewardship renewal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will free the human family from the coronavirus. Guide all who are searching for treatments or a vaccine and protect all who are vulnerable from the disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and all who are on our prayer list, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith and our silent prayers. For most Holy Trinity Parish, that we have a greater unity in the church and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of John W. Salinkus, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Lord grant him eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have them lifted up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, every duty and every salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and and profess profess your resurrection resurrection until you come come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace at our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but at the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you you take take away the sins sins of the world, have have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by this sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.